is available. And I don't really agree with the peak oil um, idea that's being promoted out there. I, I think that we do have a lot more that we can use. I'd also like to see us get into natural gas. I am also for nuclear. I'm uh, also, I think our coal plants, uh, we could do a lot more there. So I think we, have, we do have to look for some alternatives, but I don't think we're going to reach peak oil for quite a few years. Okay, uh, Mr. McCain. Sure. Um, we, have, we have more oil in the Rockies than in, according to the latest geologic, geographic geologic surveys, than in the entire Middle East. The, the oil is there, it's readily accessible. Uh, we have oil off the coast of Florida, in the Gulf, we have plenty of oil there. Um, if we were to actually pursue our own oil reserves, history again does repeat itself. It's happened many times in the past. If we, were to, if we were to pursue our reserves, guaranteed OPEC will do what it's always done. It's going to cut the price of oil in half. They've done it numerous times in the past. They'll do it again. Um, so I may be walking off of the question here, but bottom line is I, do, I just believe we need to go after our own resources. And then when the rest of the, the, rest of the world decides to make its adjustment, then we can make an adjustment at that time too. I don't think we're anywhere near out of oil. Okay, and, and, and your thoughts on this? Well, for one, uh, I'll clarify one thing for uh, Paul here. The, 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 oil, the shale oil they're talking about in, the, in the Colorado and Utah and so forth, uh, that's shale oil, and you have to heat that material to about seven to 800 degrees to get that to release its oil. Very cost, inefficient way to get oil. Uh, I think we need to look at all the oil sources we have. One of the things we need to do though, to get off of oil is try to make every uh, nuke every plant for electricity and, and do everything we do with electricity in this country, period. And do that with electricity and do it with nuclear energy. That's the most renewable, that's the most uh, abundantly available source. We haven't built a nuclear plant in 35 years in the United States. We're building them all over the world, but we're not. we got the highest technology. we got the best, best brains in the country. So we have to do those things so that we get as many things off of the need for fossil fuels as we can, and then try to make all those things more efficient. And, uh, you know, you, you've got to inspire the minds of the people who are in energy to be able to produce energy. And I'm going to tell you, no matter, as they begin to run out of one thing, the energy companies will do other energy for you. But we need to be smart enough from a congressional standpoint to make sure that we go on nuclear energy for our electricity production as much as possible and then clean coal as best we can with that and make fossil fuels go as long as we can in, in an inefficient way, in, in, in an efficient way, excuse me. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> the master of the cloud. A lot of difference between inefficient and efficient, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Perry, you know, um, you're, you're pretty familiar with this, I believe, the legal battle over that water from the Apalachicola, Chattahoochee, uh, Flint River system. And you, you probably recall last year's ruling that Atlanta cannot use Lake Lanier as a source of its potable water. Uh, what's your perspective on the issue of water sharing among the three states that just been this incredible bugaboo for more than a generation now? Well, I think it's absolutely horrible that we only have until 2012 for a decision to be made and our governors could not get together and make the decision. So in 2012, it will be made by the courts, which that's absolutely a debacle on the part of the three governors. Uh, and I've spoken with some of the people, uh, with the Corps of Engineers, one of the generals that's heading uh, that project and uh, they they kind of feel the same way that they hate to see it go into the courts so what I would suggest is that everyone talk to Governor Christ uh, for as long as we can and try to get him in the same room with the two other governors and then come up with something no one's going to walk away with everything they want uh, but we can do a lot better than have the courts tell us what we will have to do at least we would have a voice there okay thank you um, here, here's one for you Mr. McNeil I'll, Many people from you know, both sides of the congressional aisle and both sides of the political spectrum very frequently criticize public transportation because of the amount of subsidization that it requires. So the question is, should we make the highway systems and also our aviation systems pay for themselves with, with higher fees and allowing them to kind of take the, the, the caps off of their, their revenue streams? And, 
whether this would take the form of more toll roads or you know higher airfares or whatever, and again let that market solution do its thing or what? Yes, I, I agree with your last part of that statement. Everything's got to pay its own way, and that, that's every every phase of the government has got to pay its own way, and you don't do it by just raising taxes and and or hiring more people to start more commissions because all that money has to come from the free enterprise system sooner or later to pay for those people's salaries. But we did do that. I, I've got a twin engine plane, so I've been in aviation since 1968. Most of my opponents weren't even born when I started flying. But, uh, and of course, we've got a lot of vehicles to roll because we have trucks and equipment to solve environmental problems for cities all over the country. So I, I will be uh, hurt by that, but we've got to do it in a way that, that everything pays for its own way. And whatever that cost is, is what it is. And that's, we've got to face that sooner or later in America. And uh, I'd rather face it now. Uh, it's like right now, the government's spending 50% more than it's taken in. But if you spend, if you make 100,000 a year, you spend 150,000 a year, in well, about 20 years, your kids sure gonna be proud of what you save them for an inheritance. Okay, uh, Mr. McCain says uh, that the provision of water is, is kind of a public function here. How would the market protect drinking water quality in Florida? How would the market protect it? Uh -huh. That's a real good question. I can't tell you they have a real good answer. Um, I really don't know. I do not have an answer to that question. Very honestly. All right. All right. Uh, Ms. Berghill, um, anything that you've done personally to um, improve the environment, change your lifestyle, or, or what you've done with the, the thought of conserving resources or protecting the environment, things of that sort? Well, uh, probably not really. I mean, I, I have a Native American background, so we certainly appreciate, you know, Mother Earth. And uh, but as far as other, th just probably recycling like other people do. Now, I still drive a big SUV, and I will drive a big SUV. I, I'm the mother of five children, and I will drive a big SUV probably all my life. Uh, and am I going to turn my, my heating or my cooling, am I going to adjust it way down or way up? No, I'm not going to do that uh, because I think that we can be smarter and we've got to have people that will realize that with nuclear power and also with natural gas, we can do a lot in this country that we're not doing now. Uh, beyond that, though, and here, here's a question for everyone because it does get to an economic development and a jobs issue, which is looking for whether it's replacement or supplemental sources of energy to, as you said, nuclear, natural gas, coal, you know, the fossil fuel thing that we have right now. Is it worthwhile to pursue governmental policies that encourage the creation of green jobs and green industries to get more people working in this country? Well, what do you think, Mr. Mayor? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, my, I'm, I want to add a little bit to what she said there. Uh, products I've invented have saved the cities of America at least $100 million or more, maybe closer to $200 million. There's at least 1,000 people in America have jobs today because of products <coughs> I personally invented myself and got patents on. So I, I have solved a lot of our problems. On my little ranch out here towards Greensboro, I've got orchards, I've got everything done so I can live without any fertilizer or anything else out there on about 23 acres with a few horses. And uh, I, I believe in solving the problems as I go. And uh, like I say, I'm kind of an oxymoron. I'm a Republican environmentalist. I believe in fixing things. All right. Well, my, my products last 100 years in the sewer, by the way, which makes everything flow faster and more economically, and it keeps the infiltration from coming to the sewer. It keeps the exfiltration from going out of the sewer. We work with industry and cities all over America. Very good, Mr. McCain. Green jobs have proven to be very costly. They've been very costly. Um, they end up, the public ends up paying a lot of the freight for these green jobs. Um, green jobs will come when, when our technology gets to that stage. And at that point, you will have green jobs. Now, that is why I kind of propose that energy plan that I have, because that will encourage research and development for alternative forms of technology, which we obviously need. It's not going to hurt. I'm, I'm in favor of everything. But, um, I mean, for example, cap and trade. I mean, look, what it, look at Spain, for, for heaven's sakes. I mean, there, when they actively went after their green jobs, they lost 2.2 jobs for every one green job they created at a cost of $800,000 per job. That's just bad business. 
It just doesn't work. Um, we, we need to expand our horizons as far as, 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 as energy goes, but not at the taxpayer's cost. Okay, and, and your thoughts, Ms. Perry? Well, first thing I would do is lower our corporate tax rates so that our companies would want to be investigating what they could do as far as green jobs and green products. Right now, all that we've done in this country is we have supplied through MSNBC and NBC uh, and General Electric, uh, we have supplied them with a way so